I love cheese. Excluding vegans, we all love cheese. It's just that most of us are not willing to have our love of cheese turn our digestive tracts into a leaking sludge pipe. No. Orlin, look at this. You pooped it. Cheese and dairy in general is rather an unusual type of food, as humans are the only mammals that frequently eat dairy into adulthood and consume dairy from other animals. Science has yet to document a chimp milking a cow in the wild, let alone turning that milk into cheese. By the time most mammals are past their infancy, they develop lactose intolerance, which in simplified terms means that their digestive system can't process the sugar lactose properly, which usually results in them getting the shits. However, many human cultures around the world, particularly pastoral cultures reliant on sheep herding, as well as raising goats, acquired calories and nutrition from the absence of grain and game to hunt, and as a result, relied on dairy. After generations, humans who consumed dairy would develop tolerance for lactose into adulthood at higher rates of cultures that did not. To this day, lactose intolerance can be found most commonly in cultures with less reliance on pastoralism, such as East Asia, a region of the world where dairy and cheese, by and large, does not play a prominent role in their diets. Dairy did not play an important role in the Americas and Australia, where domestic cattle, goats, and sheep did not live before the arrival of Europeans. The Andean peoples may have used llamas and alpacas for cheese production, but it's difficult to confirm since they didn't have any written language. As a result, dairy and thereby cheese making was by and large relegated to the Middle East, North Africa, and the Central Asian steppe, along with most of all Europe, and to a lesser extent, the Indian subcontinent. The oldest remains of the cheesemaking process are some Eastern Europeans, as archaeologists can study the inner chemical compounds in pots in that region. Some have claimed that the cooler climate made milk storage in this region easier, which led to a greater proliferation of cheese. Whether or not this is true is debatable. The problem with milk is that it spoils like, well, milk. Moisture leads to pathogens and spoiling, so humans would squeeze the curdled milk and apply salt to reduce the water content to provide structure and longevity. In North Africa, harder cheese varieties were produced, which did not melt as easily and could be preserved with higher amounts of salt, which is common in North and West Africa. However, while salt is really good at killing harmful bacteria, in the time before mass pasteurization, it is also good at killing beneficial bacteria, which is essential for fermentation along with the enzymes which could kickstart the process of curdling, resulting in whey, the liquid, and curds which could be used to make cheese after draining the whey, through pressing the curds with salt and other ingredients, which results in cheese. Fresh soft cheese were easier to make, but spoiled easily. Hard cheeses required more processing and molding along with the removal of more whey. However, they last a lot longer, However, they also need to ripen into something in order to be really tasty and sharp. The first mention of cheese in written history was, of course, the Sumerians and what is now Iraq, the first true civilization. They produced the first real recipes for soft, salty cheese with a great deal of whey, similar to cottage cheese, the most simple of cheeses. Egyptians also produced cheese from goats, buffaloes, and cow milk downplaying the hypothesis that this was largely the result of colder climate peoples requiring to use cheese because the milk wouldn't spoil as easily. Cheese still remains a major factor in North African and Middle Eastern diets, with halloumi being the most famous of all. In the Indian subcontinent, the history of cheese making is far more mysterious. Their most famous cheese is paneer. However, this isn't mentioned as prominently in the ancient historical record like, say, other Indian dairy staples like clarified butter, yogurt, and milk. Chances are Indian cheese making was a much slower evolutionary process, dating back from the Indo-Aryans to the Muslim rule and eventually contact with the Europeans. Speaking of Europeans, the Greeks believed that they learned the art of cheese making from one of their ancient heroes, Aristeus, of which I am mispronouncing, who is said to have pioneered multiple crafts, cheese making being one of them. However, it is likely that the Greeks over 
a great period of time, managed to take cheese making from various other groups of people, such as various other Eastern Europeans and people from the Middle East. However, again, we're not quite sure. The Romans, in typical fashion, took Greek ideas and just added new names, and cheese making was not that much different. However, while the Roman Empire collapsed, various Christian monasteries remained producing cheeses, and with less centralization, each region of Western Europe produced its own type. Cheddar in England, blue cheese in Denmark, Gouda or Gouda, I'm mispronouncing that in what is now the Netherlands, Parmesan in what is now Italy, and way, way more in France. In the modern age, there was a mass migration from Europe to the Americas, bringing cheese making in mass to the other side of the Atlantic. One of the earliest examples of this is Monterey Jack from California, which was produced by Spanish monks. The most important innovation was pasteurizing milk, making the process much safer for human consumption. However, sometimes the processing has gone too far, with mass production, population growth, urbanization, post-industrialization, and two working parents as women enter the workforce, processed food like BS cheese became very popular. Given the existence of processed cheese, which is usually less than two-thirds real cheese, hence the name cheese product, and given the aforementioned socioeconomic circumstances, processed cheese proliferated, resulting in quite possibly one of the nastiest creations of the modern age. I was going to end this off on something profound, but I'm just going to end it. Processed cheese is gross. Don't eat it. Bye.